Hello everyone, and welcome to an exciting Spotlight video featuring, explaining, and showcasing an interesting and rather unorthodox build I created from scratch, now known to me as the Blood Knight Tank. This is a Blood for the Blood God legendary enchant build that holds solid aggro and survivability while also giving a tank the flexibility and the potential to deal insane damage with the group. Similar to the Blood God video I've made, this will be a walkthrough going over the random enchants, talents, and abilities that are necessary to becoming a Blood Knight yourself, while also showcasing tank gameplay testing I did on Mythic and Mythic Plus dungeons. My hope with this video is to spread awareness that many unknown non-meta builds can absolutely work with some testing, and of course to expand the use of this awesome legendary enchant Blood for the Blood God. If all this sounds exciting to hear, then consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel to keep up to date on new Ascension related videos and tricks to becoming a successful player on Classless WoW. Also, click the bell icon so you can stay up to date on when I post. Now onto the video. You're probably asking what is this and why? I understand the curiosity flowing through your brain with this one. The reason first? Truly, I've been curious about this idea for a while, since my main tank spec on Ascension is a Blade Master. I always imagined a Blade Master would be the one causing carnage, so honestly I just had to find out if this idea would even be viable in practice, and I must say, I ended up rather impressed. This specialization utilizes the base layout of a strength Blade Master tank, while focusing heavily on the ability Rend and Rogue abilities to inflict heavy damage over time to completely destroy your enemies. Each attack you do complements the next as you slash, spin, and scream around, leaving only havoc in your wake. I'll be starting by going over the enchantments you'll be needing to blood tank. The main component of this build, of course, is the legendary enchantment, Blood for the Blood God. I've done a full explanation of this enchantment on the video pinned above, and a video on how to find the enchantment as well, so consider checking that out if you need more in-depth information. For today, we will be focusing on the Bathe in Blood bleed damage stacks and the favor of the Soul Flare AoE explosion aspect of the enchantment in this video. Rizashi Talents is unusable as it can only be used with daggers, so to replace this ability I have chosen Hemorrhage, since with a certain talent you can get two combo points per usage. For epic enchants, I considered a few options and after a lot of testing on the training dummy and in practice, I decided that Bloodletting, the World Forge enchant Saber Slash, and the World Forge enchant Hellscream are absolutely the way to go to quickly spread your damage over time effects on multiple targets. Also, they synergize extremely well into a solid and satisfying rotation. Bloodletting spreads Rend when you rupture a target with Rend. Saber Slash will spread Rupture if used with 5 combo points on a target that has Rupture while Hellscream scales with Rend and ends up becoming quintessential to the build as it's your number one ability on the damage meter and also to me is the number one ability in thematics. My rare enchants are all shown here and can be subject to change. The main two of note for this video are Vigor, which allows for 115 energy, meaning you can use three hemorrhages in a row if needed since the ability only costs 35 energy. The other random enchant I'd like to mention is called Honor Among Thieves and I take two of these. This will reduce the internal cooldown of Honor Among Thieves from 3 seconds down to 2, immediately fixing any issues of getting 4 combo points almost ever. Now let's talk about the talents. Similar to the Blood God DPS guide, I'm going to break down the talents into 3 categories this time. Offense, Defense, and Key Talents. The offensive talents I have chosen here are mainly to enhance our damage over time abilities and to provide a more fluid rotation. 5 points in Cruelty is a staple as it allows Ren to critically hit at its capstone. Also, as a bonus, it gives 5% crit chance and strength. 1 point in Deep Wounds, while the damage is nice, is mainly used to dish out another bleed for a longer Hunger for Blood duration. 3 points in Vitality, Relentless Strikes, and Honor Among Thieves all together make it so you never feel a moment of uncertainty on what to press next, as each will increase energy regeneration and add extra combo points as you fight. 2 points in Dirty Deeds will keep your Dispatch or Saber Slash cheap, and also will deal increased damage to low health enemies, so that's big plus. I stayed light on offense and just picked what I needed since the talents defensively are what's going to keep me alive while in the thick of the worst ascension has to offer. Now, let's talk defense. I decided to go heavily into tanking talents as a dead tank is not a god tank. I take classic blade master talents like tactical mastery, iron will, and deflection as they are essential to give plenty of parry percentage based on your strength as well as reducing the overall damage you take into mitigated damage over time. For damage reduction, I have taken Adaptive Defense for 5% flat DR, Improved Defensive Stance for another 5%,
and also Aspect of the Monkey Mastery to reduce my damage taken again by another 4%, equaling a total of 14% reduced damage taken. I then have Ardent Defender as my saving grace, as it reduces the damage I take by 6% while under 35% health, and will constantly save me from death quite literally if I fall to zero health. Lastly, I have chosen Tenacity, as I felt like the 6% increase in threat gain on all abilities would be rather useful, since I'll be revolving around rogue abilities in the rotation, and the increase in armor based on my strength is a sweet addition. The main and really only key talent for this build is Sinister Calling. This talent, Capstone Bonus, is what we want as it allows us to gain 2 combo points per use of Hemorrhage as long as the target has an active bleed on them. I recommend starting combat with Rend or Hellscream and then go. Speaking of Hellscream and Rend, let's now go over the abilities to play a successful Blood God tank. I'll be talking over each ability in no specific order. I believe all the abilities I mentioned here are a must. To start, Rend is your powerhouse bleed ability and your best friend. It does the most damage of any ability in this list, and it scales with your health screen. Hemorrhage will be our staple combo point generator as it builds the most combo points per energy cost at 2 for 35 energy and increases the physical damage our target takes as an added bonus. Next, I consider Hellscream and Crimson Tempest to be equally as important as they both deal massive AoE damage and both apply bleeds onto the targets. Primarily aim for Crimson Tempest for sure as your combo point finisher, while getting Hellscream is optional as it can be considered more difficult to roll into Intimidating Shout. My honorable mention here is Bladestorm, since how can you be a Blade Master without a spin to win? I also find that Bladestorm does crazy damage instantly to grab aggro on packs of enemies. Dispatch and Saber Slash both work as they will be the way you mainly gain stacks on your Bathe in Blood. And if you can get it as well, Eviscerate will make it faster for you to build stacks. Last for damaging abilities, Rupture allows for the use of Bloodletting and Saber slashes AoE spreads, so I highly consider that a must in this build as well. For defensive abilities, I take Divine Protection for 50% damage reduction, Avatar for 15% increased damage and 30% damage reduction, and Last Stand for a 20% increase to your maximum health pool. I tend to use Last Stand casually as it allows on a 2 minute cooldown for the healer to have more room to heal you from over the course of a dungeon. I use Divine Protection mainly for big pulls first, and then I follow it up with Avatar to deal the pain right back to the ones who wished me harm. Now to complete this guide we will go over a rotation of sorts since a tank doesn't normally need a rotation and should be adapting to each and every scenario at all times. Though for this guide, this is how I start my pulls. To begin, I start with charge, followed up by hellscream for instant damage over time bleeds on 5 targets. Next, I apply rend on the highest health target and then use 2 hemorrhages to get 5 combo points into a rupture. This will apply massive rend bleeds on up to 10 targets. I then follow up with 2 more hemorrhages for 5 combo points into a saber slash which spreads rupture into a crimson tempest. I reapply hellscream and then explode using hunger for blood. I rinse and repeat this whole rotation as I pull multiple groups of mobs and also add in whirlwind, blade storm, and thunderclap when I need instant damage. I'd like to give a mention to a few ideas I wish I could have gotten to, but I haven't yet to pull or get. First is Vampiric Embrace with the Twilight Random Enchantment, which allows you with Vampiric Embrace to gain health from bleed damage over time effects. I don't know how well it'll be in practice, but to me that sounds synergistic on paper. Also, the Blood Horror ability with the Coagulation Random Enchant could be possibly usable, though my thought is that depends on if during the channel you can still parry or dodge while using it. I'll leave that theorycrafting to you my friends, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you around for the next one.